All right, uh, day, what was that, day seven, Bonnet? Yep. Day seven, all right. Um, no, I, I, I'm, I'm uh, you know, right now we're mixing a lot of different people with a lot of different groups. I, I would say we haven't settled in in any type of depth chart. Um, overall, I would say I, I'm pleased where, where we're at. we still got a long way to go. But as far as the physicality, the want to, um, I mean, we've shown so much improvement from spring. I thought the guys did a really, really good job in summer on their own, um, really learning the playbook. And then you can see it's carried on in the fall. Right now, we pretty much have 90% of our playbook in, and we're calling it all. So there's a lot on their plate uh, mentally, but I, I feel like they're doing a pretty good job. Still looking for some, uh, some more consistency out of the unit, but overall pleased with where they're at. So, so after that, I'll open it up. Coach, I know it's early, but you can can you talk about uh, stopping the, the run right up to a gap and uh, covering on the outside and over the top with the secondary so yeah, far? Yeah, um, you know that's where where we got to get more consistency. Uh, uh, you know, a little bit sometimes when we do our job, we're pretty good. Um, you know, uh, today we ended up giving up a deep ball from a coverage bust, and then we had a big run hit up the a gap uh, from a, from an assignment standpoint. So um, when we play it right, we're pretty good. When we don't, we got to get it on the ground uh, from the secondary. So again, looking for for marked improvement. These next six days, we have a recovery day, then we go six uh, days straight. I think the cream will start rising to the crop, and and we'll figure out. Again, we're mixing and matching a lot of guys right now, and and so it's hard to pinpoint. Uh, who on that play or who on that play, um, you know, necessarily didn't do their job. But, um, you know, overall, we just got to be more consistent as a unit. You know, in today's game, you can't just play with 11 players. You got to have 22, 25, 26, especially with the opportunity now with a, with a playoff. So we're looking to build depth right now. And then by the, by the next six days, we're going to start paring it down and, and figuring out who's our guys. Uh, Coach, with Harold on the inside at inside linebacker, how has he sort of um, uh, reacted? Like, what, like, how quickly is he sort of picking up that spot? He's done an he's unbelievable gonna... job. Harold Perkins right now is playing on fire. Um, again, have a lot on his plate mentally. Um, we have packages. We're moving them all around, so he's not just playing on the inside. Um, but he's fitting, his, fitting the run as well as anybody that we have at linebacker right now. I think our linebackers are doing a good job overall fitting the run. But very, very pleased with, with Harold and uh, really his development. Again, you talk about from where we started this thing at the beginning of spring to where, he's not, where he is now, it's night and day. And he's an ascending player. I, I really think he's not even scratching the surface still um, of where he's going to be. So I look forward to you know, every single week him improving, but very, very happy with what he's doing right now. Coach, right over here, uh, we got a chance to see uh, Jacoby in today and how vocal he was out there. Can you talk about his development, both mentally stepping into a leadership role and just physically how he's been able to advance over the offseason? Yeah, it's been it's been fun, obviously, being here uh, Jacobian's freshman year to now, watching him grow um, more off the field than on the field. He's always been a, a big, strong um, player inside, uh, but he's really, really matured off the field and becoming a vocal leader in a positive way. Um, so it's been really, really cool to see that standpoint. I'd say, you know, I feel really, really good with him inside. Uh, again, strong at the point of attack. He's played a lot of football, uh, so he understands block recognition. He does a good job getting the, getting the calls and executing the calls. So um, it's been neat, you know, kind of being away for a couple of years and then coming back to see him and, and to see his growth. Um, you know, he just had, he just had a baby boy, and, and uh, that sometimes changes you as well. So um, really, really happy with Jacobian and, and love, love what he's doing out there on the field. Uh, with a guy like Zy Alexander, when he's coming back from an injury and you're working back slowly, what's your goal for him? Or I guess kind of what are your expectations for what a, a kind of a timeline looks like for a guy like that? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, it, it's hard with ACLs to put like an exact timeline on it because a lot of times, um, you know, they might be healed physically and then it's just the mental uh, piece of it, of being able to change direction, of be, you know, taking a hit on it. Uh, I think he hit over 20 the other day for the first time. Um, kind of got his legs tangled up in, in a deep post the other day and popped right up. So I've been, I've been happy. Um, again, I, I don't want to put a timeline and say this is when we're expecting him back. Uh, but I, I, you know, I didn't have necessarily an expectation going into fall camp. But I would say he's exceeded probably what I thought he would do. Coach, going back over to Jacobian, what kind of relationship have you developed with him over the years? And you know, you've coached obviously a lot of defenses over the years. What kind? Of, what do you, makes him stand out as a player? You've coached a lot of good defensive tackles like D. Rob last year at Mizzou. 
Um, what what makes um, him stand out as all, among all defensive linemen that you've been able to coach? Yeah, I think uh, Jacoby and I have a really, really good relationship. Um, again, he's a guy, you know, and usually this is the case with older guys. They You can kind of be a little more loose with them because they know when to turn it on and when to turn it off. So I would say we probably have a pretty playful relationship, but when it's time to go to work, he knows when it's time to go to work. Um, the thing that really, uh, you know, going back to what I just said about him, the thing that, that separates him is one is strength. You know, he's got a low center of gravity, uh, really, really good lower and upper body strength, but then also block recognition. Um, you know, so that just comes from experience. But those are probably the two things that separates him for the rest of our guys right now. Hey, Coach, over here. Um, Ashton Stamps has really stepped up in the fall camp. Can you talk a little bit about his performance in fall camp and what he's done to become that guy? Ashton's worked his tail off to get where he's at. You know, he's a guy that, um, you know, if I was up here in the summer um, doing whatever, every time I go to the indoor, he was he was on the jug machine or he was working on the bands or he was working his footwork. Um, so, so, you know, credit to what he's been able to do. Um, you know, he's still a young player, I, you know, and I challenge him every day. I'm, I'm looking for more consistency out of Ashton. Um, he, he, has, he has stepped his game up, but he's, he's not where we need him to be overall. And, and that's not a knock, um, but we got, we got two more weeks to get him to, to be what he is capable of being, you know, from, from a mental consistency standpoint. Coach, this is your second stint here at LSU. You did a heck of a job in Missouri, but when you got that phone call to come back here, what was it like for you? Oh, good question. Um, in all honesty, it was bittersweet. Um, I knew this was home. Um, I know this was my, my family's home, but at the same time, I enjoyed my time in Missouri. Coach Drinkwitz and, and that staff, uh, really, really close with, really close with the players up there. And obviously, anytime you're, you're riding the high of a Cotton Bowl championship, it always makes it, you know, more, more difficult. But at the end of the day, um, th this is home. And this is one of the few jobs, you know, complete transparency uh, that I told Coach Drinkwitz with, you know, if they if they do call, I'm going to listen. And um, so we got a very good relationship, was honest throughout the entire process. Uh, but at the end of the day, I knew this is what was the best fit for me and my family. So uh, very, very happy to have this job. Coach, now that you've gotten a couple weeks of uh, camp under your belt, what do you think the identity of this defense will be and what are you hoping to see um, it become? Um, what I want it to be or what we are right now. Right now, I'll be honest, we're inconsistent. Um, what I want it to be, if we do our job, I think we got a chance to be pretty good. I really do. I think we have all the pieces in place um, to, to have a good defense. Um, what I want to see is, is, is some, a little more player-led player, player, um, player accountability um, and guys just doing their job on a consistent basis. If we do that, we can, we can have a good year. We're not there yet. but. Um, I, I think we have really good speed. I think we're physical. Um, we're still improving as a tackling unit right now, but we have shown improvement from the spring. Um, I think our guys really work hard at it. You know, you don't have a lot of opportunities to tackle live uh, throughout fall camp, um, but we work hard on it, you know, through drill work and whatnot. Uh, but I think we have a chance to be pretty good. We just, we just got to be more consistent. Coach, you kind of touched on this already, but I, I was going to ask about how much opportunity you've had to work on live tackling and what's your philosophy for, for uh, executing live tackling versus keeping your players healthy? Um, so th th today was our second day of live tackling. Uh, and, and honestly, honestly, you know, in today's game, I would say most places I've been, the most you probably get is four. You know what I mean? Um, and that's why it's so important when we do thud or even when we do tag. To me, tackling is its as much about the approach. It's much about the angle. It's as much about knowing where your help is coming from as it is getting the guy on the ground. As crazy as that sounds, you know, we drill it all the time with tackling circuit. They're getting um, drill work from that standpoint as far as getting, you know, bags or donuts or whatever the case may be on the, on the, um, on the ground. Uh, it, it, to me, you really, really have to – press upon the importance of the angles, of where your help's coming from, of um, your approach if you're coming from the back end. So, um, you know, from a philosophical standpoint, that's just the way the game is now. So you got to be really, really sharp, and you got to coach it hard. You know, it's easy um, to kind of, to, oh, well, you know, we did our job in 7-on-7, seven seven, but we didn't have a good angle, or we weren't in a good bent position, you know, whenever we were able to tag off. Those are the things you really have to harp on to be a really good tackling team, and I think we are. I, I think we're making progress from that standpoint. Like um, Savion and um, Jacobian were talking the other day about how um, your offensive line is probably 
one of the best in the country and that they look forward to the challenge every day of going against them. How is your front seven stacked up against that veteran line? And also, um, can you tell us a little bit more about poodles? <laughs> uh, yeah, sure can. Um, the first part of the question is um, – I think our offensive line is fantastic. I think their experience, I think Coach Davis does a really, really good job. I think they, they're physical, they play hard. I thought the same thing about them when I went against them last year at Missouri. So, um, you know, I know they got one new starter, but they're a very cohesive unit, played a lot together. Um, I, you know, again, inconsistent. Sometimes we, we hold up really well, and then sometimes we don't. Um, so, again, you know, I've, I know I keep harping on the word, but um, – Again, when we play with proper technique and, and do what we need to do, we, 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 can, we can hold our own in there. Um, and then as far as – oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I do believe we have one of the best, if not the best, offensive lines in the country. So, for sure, you know, it, we're gonna, it's going to make us better. Um, and it gives you a fair evaluation. You know, sometimes you're on some teams where the offensive line might not be that good, and then you get it in the fall, and you're like, oh, you know, we're not as good as we thought we were on defense. You know, so um, – it, it, they're, 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 they're a very good challenge for us every day, but it definitely gets us better. Um, and then poodles, that's a lack of physicality or um, trying to show up your teammate. You know, if, if a big thing to me is body language. You know, if a guy gets beat deep and he puts his palms up, that's a poodle. You know, if we turn down a hit, that's a poodle. So that's, that's, we don't want poodles. <laughs> Hey, Coach. Um, Coach Kelly and several of your players have talked about uh, paralysis by analysis. That's what they want to avoid and that they're doing less thinking. It's more playing football. Can you speak to that and, and what you're implementing from that aspect? Absolutely. I, I think our, our scheme is very user friendly, very player friendly. Um, you know, we really do uh, work hard sometimes, you know, uh, it takes some time, but we've, we do a really good job, I think, as a staff compartmentalizing things, putting things in buckets, trying to give them some word association so it's, it's clicking with them pretty quickly. Um, and I think our guys are playing really fast, sometimes too fast, and that's, some part, that's sometimes part of our inconsistency right now. But in, in all honesty, um, you know, that, that, that's okay. Sometimes, you, you know, you'd rather have to pull the chain back than have to kick them on the booty on the way out the door. So, um, we just got to slow them down in some instances. But I think our kids are playing fast again. I think it really has to do with the way we implement the scheme. And then I think we got really good, um, you know, teachers. As, you know, when you look at our coaching staff, uh, these guys have, have coached in a lot of different schemes. They understand football. They understand concepts. Um, you know, but I, I think that's, that's the biggest thing. And then the second part of it is communication. I think our guys have really stepped up from a, from a verbal communication standpoint, pre-snap and post-snap, uh, which allows us to play faster. And it builds, it builds trust in, in the unit. So, again, once we start separating the units a little bit and not mixing and matching so many bodies, I, I should see an uptick in that just because you're working with the same one or two guys, um, you know, on an on a every snap basis. Coach over here, so I know you and Coach Sloan were together at Louisiana Tech and just being together, what just happened and now, fast forward now that was you, what have you seen from him as a coach uh, from then to now? And just talk about yourself as well and how you think you've grown since your time at Tech. Uh, I think I think Joe has, um, you know, I always say as coaches, you know what you know, you know, and, and Joe was with uh, Skip Holtz for a really, really long time. And so he knew that offense. And I think with him coming here for that year and, and learning a different scheme, and then he, he's really, really smart. And so for him to be able to build on that and, and really make it at his own, again, playing them last year to see him what we see in the, in the fall, it's not the same offense. It's, it's cool, you know, and, and I give it credit, credit to him that you know what you know, but he's been able to make it his own and, and build on what they did last year. So um, it's been neat to see. It's been neat to see. Um, as far as me, I look back at those years and I'm like, man, I was an idiot a bunch of times, man, you know, and, and it just comes with experience. You know, you look at some of the things that you might have done from a schematic standpoint um, that now probably are like, man, we got lucky, lucky as hell if that works. So, uh, and, and just the game has slowed down. You know, your first couple of years as a play caller, uh, especially on defense, offense is, is probably usually more off of a call sheet where defense might be a little bit more off field. Uh, the game has definitely slowed down over the last 10 years. Coach, a guy like Whit Weeks, we saw some flashes from him as a freshman. Just what do you see from him so far in camp, and how can he kind of step up um, to kind of maybe give the other linebackers a breather or just step up whenever they decide to that their time here is done after the season? 
Witt is a uh, phenomenal football player, extremely hard worker, never takes a, never takes a play off. Um, his effort is, is second to none. He can really run. Uh, he's going to play. He's going to be an integral, integral part. He's just not a backup. You know, I look at it in my room, and, and I know you asked specifically about Witt, but I do believe we have four starters in that room. So he's going to play a ton. Um, and I think he just needs to keep doing what he's doing. He's very inquisitive. Um, he's always wanting to know what he can do better. Uh, and he's really improved his game. So I, I'm very pleased with where he's at. Hey, Coach, right here. Um, you know, with the defense line kind of being young and inexperienced, how important is it to have two coaches like Bo Davis and uh, Coach Peoples? Yeah, I think the defensive line, um, in my opinion, um, it's, it's two completely different positions. I think it's really, really hard in today's game for what we do schematically, not speaking for other teams. It's very hard to have one guy coaching all four of them because it's two different worlds. Where defensive ends nowadays are, I mean, we call them edges. They're more like outside linebackers. You know, you're playing a five, you're playing a six where you're not really getting double teamed. You know, defensive tackle, you're getting double teamed almost every play. So um, I think those those two are the best in the business. And, and I've been around a, a bunch and um, – I think those two are as good as it gets, and, and they work really well together. You know, they both have a Pete Jenkins background, um, and so they have the same, you know, philosophically the same ideas. But um, those two guys are, are, are huge of what we're doing up front. Thank you all. Appreciate it. You got it.